Good day, grade 7 students. I am Sir John, and I will be with you as we study about science. Tara, let's learn together. In today's lesson, we will be talking about different types of charging processes, which is a part of our lesson for the week 7 to 8 of the third quarter. The most essential learning competency indicated in our 4A budget of work for this week is Describe the different types of charging processes. Today's lesson is from Pivot for a Learner's Pocket, which is used by Grade 7 in Calabarzon Region. Special thanks to Ms. Lerma L. Dairit from Region 4A for sharing your expertise for the content of this lesson. As we start for today's lesson, this is actually connected to our module regarding electricity. When we say electricity, it is a form of energy that can be carried away by wires and is used for heating and lighting and to provide power for machines. Electricity has a definite and significant role in modern society. Our lives would not be the same without it. We communicate, travel, and compute faster because of the devices run by electricity. These devices have increased our comfort and safety a hundred times. Study the given figure and answer the question that follows. First question is, what happened to the bits of paper placed near the comb after using it? Why do you say so? Use figure 2 for this particular group of questions. First. What do you call the positively charged particles? Number two, what are the negatively charged particles? And number three, if an atom has equal number of positively charged particles and negatively charged particles, what will be the charge of the atom? An atom is electrically neutral because they have an equal number of protons and electrons. When do we say that an object is positively charged or negatively charged? Electrical charge is a property of matter that gives rise to a force between two charged objects. Following Benjamin Franklin's study of electricity, we call electrical charges positive and negative. These two types of charges exist in all materials and in all states of matter. Recall the subparticles of atom. Protons are the carriers of positive charges, while neutrons are the uncharged particles, and electrons are the carriers of negative charges. Electrons do not always stay in the atoms. They can be removed by rubbing. Study the given example for you to determine what will be the result if charges will be combined. Use your knowledge from your lesson in Math Grade 7 regarding integers with positive and negative values. Electric charges behave according to this rule. Like charges repel and unlike charges attract. A force that pushes objects apart is a force of repulsion. It exists between particles of the same charge. So negatively charged electrons repel one another so with positively charged protons do, while a force that pulls objects together is a force of attraction. It exists between particles of unlike charges. Negatively charged electrons are attracted to positively charged protons. The following illustrations will help you understand the rule of electric charges. Have you ever experienced placing your arm near a switched-on television screen? What happened to your hair on your arm? The standing of the hair of your arm is the result of static electricity. Electric charges can be transferred using different ways. So, how do objects get charged? To charge an object, one must alter the charge balance of positive and negative charges. There are three ways to do it, friction, conduction, and induction. The process of supplying electric charge 
to an object or losing the electric charge from an object is called charging. An uncharged object can be charged in different ways. The first process is the charging by friction. The process which an object gets charged when it is rubbed against another object or there is a direct contact between the two objects. Friction refers to the force that resists motion whenever two materials are in contact with each other. Our example for this one are the bits of paper that is attracted to the comb after using it. When two objects are rubbed together, one object loses electron while the other gains electron. The object that gains electrons has a negative charge while the object that loses electron has a positive charge. Another process is the charging by conduction. It is the process in which an object gets charged by making contact with the charged object. Example for this are the two balloons that have the same charge causing them to move away from each other. Under this process, we have two different kinds of materials. The first one are the conductors which are the materials that allows electrons to move freely. Metals are the best conductors like the copper, silver, and aluminum. While the insulators are the materials that do not allow electrons to flow freely, just like the rubber, wood, glass, or plastic. The last process is the charging by induction. It is the process in which an object gets charged by object without direct contact. The movement of electrons to one part of an object by the electric field of another object. No contact is necessary, and a neutral object needs only to come close to a charged object. For example, the leaves of the electroscope move separately when the charge rod is placed near the electroscope. As we end, take note that electricity is a form of energy that makes devices and machines run. The two types of electrical charges are positive and negative charges. Particles of the same charges repel each other while particles of unlike charges attract each other. And lastly, an object can be charged by friction, conduction, or induction. That ends up our lesson for the day. I hope you learned something from this video. Thank you for watching. Please do like, share, and subscribe. We'll see each other again for our next video. Keep going and keep learning.